Today we'll be learning about a fantasy horror comedy film from 2012 called Dark Shadows. Let's dive into it. In 1760, the Collins family took a ship across the ocean to Maine to expand their empire. They start a wildly successful fishing business that soon grows into its own town, Collinsport. As their fortunes increase, so does the town around them. They set down roots in the town, building up their own estate called Collinwood. Despite their wealth and prestige, the owner makes sure that Barnabas Collins, his son, is reminded that family comes first. Fifteen years later, Barnabas starts an affair with one of their servants named Angelique. Angelique pleads for Barnabas' love, but he rejects her. Unbeknownst to Barnabas, Angelique is actually a witch who, upon Barnabas' refusal to love her, casts a spell to kill his parents. Convinced that his parents' deaths are anything but ordinary, Barnabas begins to study the dark arts. All is not lost, however, as eventually Barnabas does fall in love with Josette Dupreez. But Angelique hears their professions of love to each other and curses Josette to jump off a cliff. Barnabas jumps off as well, but unlike Josette, he doesn't die. He turns into a vampire, cursed by Angelique to live forever so his suffering would never end. Unsatisfied with her work, Angelique turns the townspeople against Barnabas and they bury him alive. Years later, in 1972, Victoria Winters travels to Collinsport to be the new governess of the Collins family. Victoria isn't her real name, though she only adopts this name because she doesn't want anyone to know her true identity. Upon arriving at the dilapidated estate, Victoria is let in by Willie Loomis, the caretaker of the property. Willie explains that the rundown state of the mansion is because it's supposed to be maintained by a hundred servants, but now it is only him and Mrs. Johnson. At that moment, the head of the family greets Victoria from the stairs. Her name is Elizabeth Collins Stoddard. Elizabeth asks Victoria a few questions that Victoria answers with a good amount of sass. Elizabeth finds this somewhat amusing and employs Victoria right then and there. Victoria has dinner with Elizabeth and is joined by the rest of the family. Roger Collins, Elizabeth's brother who is a freeloader. Elizabeth's rebellious teenage daughter Carloin Stoddard, Roger's son David Collins who believes that he can see and talk to his dead mother's ghost. And Dr. Julia Hoffman, the live and drunker doctor that Elizabeth hired to work out David's trauma and supposed delusions. Victoria sympathizes with David and offers him some comforting words, but Elizabeth doesn't appreciate Victoria's tolerance. As Victoria is unpacking in her room, she encounters the ghost of Josette who warns her eerily that he is coming. After leading Victoria to the foyer, Josette's ghost warns the governess with the same words and falls backward from the chandelier and disappears before hitting the floor. Meanwhile, a construction crew is set to build a McDonald's near the town. They dig up and open Barnabas' coffin, unleashing the centuries-old vampire. Barnabas then feeds on the men in the construction site apologizing for his insatiable thirst. As Barnabas makes his way back to Collinwood, he observes and is baffled by the technology and clothing that he sees around Collinsport. Barnabas arrives at the mansion and encounters a drunk Willie in the front yard. He bewitches Willie to become his servant, to tell him the information he needs, and to clean him up. Barnabas enters the house and introduces himself to the children as he reminisces about the foy, but Elizabeth cuts him short. Elizabeth is skeptical of Barnabas' identity and suspects his intentions. Barnabas eases her suspicions by promising that he will not harm anyone living in the house and by showing her a hidden room full of priceless possessions that the Collins family owned. Barnabas expresses his intention to stay and bring back the family's glory with these treasures. Elizabeth agrees under the condition that his vampiric nature is kept only between her and Barnabas. The next day, Elizabeth introduces Barnabas as a distant relative from England. Barnabas makes his intent to restore the family fortune known to the others, but Elizabeth explains that Angel Bay Seafood has a monopoly over the ports and most of the boats in town. This discussion is interrupted, however, by Victoria walking into the room and catching Barnabas' attention. Victoria's striking resemblance to Josette makes it hard for Barnabas not to flirt with the governess. At the docks of Collinsport, Angelique, who is living under the name Angie Bouchard, is the founder and CEO of the Angel Bay Seafood Corporation. Her employees inform her about the accident the previous night in the forest that has the rest of the employees rattled. Angelique sees the open coffin for herself and wastes no time driving to Collinwood. She exchanges a few insults with Elizabeth and is then taken by Barnabas to talk in private. After kissing Barnabas without permission, Barnabas spouts out threats and insults toward her. Angelique explains that her fishing business, Angel Bay Seafood, 
has overthrown the Collins and the town now worships her. Barnabas is just a mere stranger to the people of Collinsport now. Angelique Leeds and Barnabas tells Elizabeth about Angie's true identity and nature. Barnabas expresses his worries, but Elizabeth empowers him to fight on like he did before Angelique had him buried alive. This inspires Barnabas to put his energy into renovating the mansion and rebuilding the family fishing business. He manages to go out in the day without burning with an umbrella, some sunglasses and a hat, but finds it hard to sleep so Willie and Mrs. Johnson brings him a coffin that he can sleep in. Barnabas also takes the time to learn about the technology of the age and spends time with Victoria. Finally, Barnabas hypnotizes the port captains into working for the Collins family instead of Angel Bay. One evening, Roger catches sight of Barnabas leaving the hidden treasure room and is suspicious. Barnabas is later found by Julia stalking a lava lamp in Carolyn's room and takes it upon herself to hypnotize and learn more about him. Upon uncovering the truth, Julia confronts Elizabeth about Barnabas, but Elizabeth convinces the doctor to continue to be fascinated by and learn about Barnabas's vampiric nature and asks her to keep quiet about the whole situation. On a later date, Barnabas asks Carolyn how to court Victoria and Carolyn tells him he needs to loosen up and hang out with normal people. This leads Barnabas to hang out with some hippies in the forest who tell him that women of this age care about love and not money. After realizing this, Barnabas feeds and kills the whole group. The next day, Julia starts a blood transfusion method on Barnabas to see if this will help cure his vampirism. Julia tells him that this procedure may not work, but Barnabas remains optimistic and compliments her. Julia then reminds him about the doctor-patient confidentiality concept by kneeling in front of him and pleasuring him. Barnabas and Victoria continue to spend time together chit-chatting about David and Victoria's opinions on the supernatural. All the while, Angelique is furious at the Collins business sudden resurrection and orders her board members to arrange a meeting with Barnabas. That night, Angelique tries to get Barnabas to sell his business to her but he rejects him. Angelique attempts to seduce Barnabas, telling him that all she really wants is Barnabas' love, but when that doesn't work, Angelique threatens to kill his whole family and Victoria if he doesn't make love to her. Barnabas obliges, and they wreck Angelique's office in the process. Afterward, Barnabas apologizes to Angelique and tells her that they will never be together. Angelique then swears to destroy him. Barnabas carries on with the blood transfusion procedure with Julia while Victoria is plagued by nightmares of memories from her childhood. As a young girl, Victoria was sent by her parents to an asylum for seeing and talking to Josette's ghost. Waking up from the dream, Victoria finds Josette's ghost in her doorway, asking for her help and disappearing in the foyer like before. The next day, Barnabas proposes to throw a ball in the newly renovated mansion to show off their power and remind the town of their stature. Carolyn explains that parties in this age are called happenings and give Barnabas tips on how to throw a successful one. Come the night of the party, Carlon is amazed that the party is a hit and that Barnabas managed to get Alice Cooper to play Lev as well. Distancing himself from the party, Barnabas finds David guarding the door to the coat room. After explaining that Roger asked him to keep people out, David is hypnotized by Barnabas into joining the party. Barnabas peers from the outside window at Roger, hooking up with a coat check employee and stealing money stashed in the coats. Later, Barnabas finds Victoria alone on the balcony. Victoria tells Barnabas that she is aware of his feelings for her and does not understand why she's always felt drawn to Collinsport and to him. Victoria tells Barnabas that for many years she was experimented on in the asylum and abandoned by her parents with only Josette's ghost to keep her company. Despite this, Victoria escaped and made her way to Collinwood after Josette pointed out the governess ad in the newspaper. Victoria expresses that she reciprocates Barnabas' feelings and they share a kiss. This is seen by Angelique and is infuriated. The next day, Barnabas hurries to Julia to tell her about his immediate need to become a human to be with Victoria, but he finds Julia transfusing his vampire blood into her to make Julia a vampire. Without hesitation, Barnabas feeds on and kills Julia for betraying his and his family's trust not noticing the growing fangs that Julia has. Then he and Willie anchor Julia's body with a cinder block and throw her in the ocean. Barnabas then catches Roger trying to gain access to the hidden room full of treasures and offers him a deal. Either be the father that David needs and deserves or leave with some pocket money that Barnabas gives him and never come back. Roger chooses the money and leaves a heartbroken David to retreat to his room. 
David almost gets crushed by the disco ball that Willie is taking down from the ceiling, but Barnabas uses his vampiric speed to save him. Regrettably, Barnabas is exposed to sunlight upon saving David and catches fire for the whole family to see. He tries to reach for David and Victoria, but they run away. Desperate, Barnabas goes and sees Angelique demanding her to take the curse away. Angelique refuses and gets Barnabas to admit to killing Julia, the construction men, and the hippies. Angelique proposes that she and Barnabas rule over the town as partners and lovers or Angelique would put Barnabas back in his coffin. Barnabas rejects her offer and tries to storm out, but finds the coffin and Angelique's employees waiting. Angelique pushes him into the box and chains him up. They get in a van and drive away with the coffin setting fire to the Collins' business as they head for the cemetery. Angelique and her posse lead the coffin in the Collins' mausoleum with the chained up Barnabas helplessly inside it. Thankfully, David finds Barnabas only 20 minutes later saying that the ghost of his mother led him to Barnabas. Back in town, a crowd is gathered around the burning building of the Collins. After revealing a recording of Barnabas' murder confessions, Angelique rallies the people against the Collins family and arrives at Collinwood with the police in tow. Barnabas, who has just gotten back to the house himself, says he will go with the police freely if they leave his family alone and if Angelique comes with him. The sheriff shoots Barnabas to no avail and Barnabas bites Angelique to reveal her cracking skin to everyone. The sheriff sends the crowd away as the battle between Angelique and Barnabas begins. Despite Barnabas' vampiric powers, Elizabeth shooting Angelique several times and Carolyn revealing she is a werewolf and attacking Angelique, they cannot defeat the witch. Angelique enchants the house to attack the Collins and tells them about all the suffering she put them all under over the years. Angelique admits to killing Barnabas's parents and David's mom and reveals that she sent the werewolf who bit Carolyn as a baby. David suddenly appears and Angelique sets her sights on him. Thankfully, the ghost of David's mother hurls Angelique into the chandelier. The chandelier crashes to the ground, rendering Angelique motionless. As the Collins family flees, Barnabas stays to bid Angelique a last goodbye. Angelique takes her heart from her cracked chest and offers it to Barnabas but the heart cracks and turns to dust in front of him, killing Angelique in the process. Barnabas, desperate to find Victoria, is sent to the cliff by David's mom. As the rest of the Collins family watches their house burn, Barnabas is able to stop Victoria. Victoria ignores his cries and jumps off because she cannot be with Barnabas because of his immortality. Barnabas jumps off after her. As they fall, Barnabas is forced to turn Victoria into a vampire so she doesn't die of the fall. When they come to moments later, Victoria has turned into an immortal vampire like Barnabas, and they can finally be together forever. Julia's body is then shown still at the ocean floor, but she opens her eyes revealing that she's become a vampire as well. Thanks for watching.